We're going now to have a look at the activity series of metals. And in particular, we're going to have a look at the metals copper, iron, magnesium, silver, sodium, and zinc. And what we're going to do as a result of our experiments is arrange those in order of decreasing reactivity. In other words, the most reactive at the top down to the least reactive. So what we've got is a series of test tubes and a series of tests. First of all, we'll test these metals with cold water, then hot water, and then cold acid, hydrochloric acid. So we're going to start now with cold water. So we have here now our four metals, uh, our copper, and we'll just add a little bit of cold water and our iron and the zinc. No, this is magnesium and zinc. Now we might have to leave those a little while just to see whether or not we're going to get a reaction over a period of time. So the zinc there is to the bottom of the tube and the magnesium at the moment is floating up there. And our iron is sitting there and along with the copper, I'll give that a bit of a shake and now it's sunk. Okay, so we'll leave that those there to rest for a little while. Then we'll try this with same thing with hot water. So I'm now adding some hot water to each of these metals. So first of all is copper. And secondly is iron. Now this hot water I've just got out of a, a tap which dispenses boiling water. So it's, it's quite hot, probably about 90 degrees Celsius. So let's put that up to the camera and see what is happening, if anything. So that is our zinc. This is magnesium. And there doesn't seem to be any reaction there. And iron, doesn't seem to be any reaction there either. And finally copper, we might expect no reaction. We'll just leave that for a little while and see if there does start to become a reaction. And in the meantime, we'll have a look at the action of acid, cold acid on each of these metals. So here are our metals and our cold acid is in this container here. So I'll just add some drops of this and I might just have a match ready in case we have some hydrogen coming off. So here's our acid, hydrochloric acid, two molar and two molar hydrochloric acid on iron two molar hydrochloric acid on magnesium and you can see a lot of bubbles coming out there 
and then that's hydrochloric acid on zinc. I'll just put my finger over that and see if we can get a build up of that gas and test it for hydrogen. Now we know the test for hydrogen. Well, there it was <laughs> the pop test, not to be confused with the grandfather test. So let's have a look to see if we're getting any reaction from any of the others. Um, first of all, with the zinc, we want to have a look to see if there are any bubbles on that zinc. Now there are bubbles. The question is, are they due to just uh, air adhering to the metal or do we in fact have hydrogen coming off? Now the rate of reaction there, as you can see, it makes it very hard to fill the test tube. I've just shaken those bubbles off and let's see if they come back. Well, I can see bubbles coming back on that. I hope they show up on the video. Let's go back to our cold water see if there's any reaction there certainly from what I can see here with the zinc no reaction the magnesium no reaction. Just checking again the hot water and our metals. I can't see any reaction there with the magnesium and no reaction with the zinc. And certainly no reaction with the iron or the copper. Our last test now is with sodium and water. Let's see how we go with that. Here you can see the container that we've got for sodium. Now you may or may not be able to read what it says there, but it says reacts vigorously with water. Uh, at the moment, what it's in is in kerosene. Now what that kerosene does is seals away the oxygen of the air from the metal. And you can see there are small pieces of metal uh, in the container there. What I'm going to do is take one of those out and put them in there, put it in hot water, or not hot water, but ordinary cold water uh, there. And I'll change the position of the camera so that you can see the reaction that occurs. Now what I'm going to do is try and use a pair of tweezers to take the sodium out of this bottle. And it's rather difficult. Right, what I've got now is a piece of sodium that's covered in kerosene uh, and I'm going to put it then into the container of water. And we'll just see what happens. And you should be able to see the a fairly vigorous reaction with the sodium reacting with the water. And obviously the heat there is so strong that it ignites the hydrogen that's been given off. <coughs> it's 
So there we are. <clears throat> Some fumes coming off there. So I'm making it a little bit uncomfortable. But um, when we handle this, the tweezers <clears throat> are what we use. You can't handle sodium metal with your fingers. If you do, you find that the reaction of the sodium with the water in your fingers um, causes a burn. So what we've shown there is sodium is a very reactive metal. So you're now in a position to be able to fill in the results table there and have a look at the discussion. And the discussion there, first question was, name the gas produced in some of the reactions. Well, we've mentioned that that's hydrogen. The equation for uh, sodium and water would be sodium plus water gives hydrogen gas plus sodium hydroxide. Zinc and hydrochloric acid, that would be zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas. Let's now have a look at metal replacement reactions and have a look at the reactivity that is shown there. So looking at part two now, we've got first of all copper sulfate here in test tube A and test tube B and in test tube C we've got iron sulfate iron 2 sulfate and in test tubes E and F we have zinc sulfate and now in test tube A we add iron and in test tube B we add zinc and in test tube C we add copper and in test tube D we add zinc test tube E we add copper and in test tube F we add iron might just give those a bit of a shake make sure the metals don't float right and we can come back later perhaps and see if there's any change now certainly there's change straight away for the reactions with copper so I'll just see if I can make those more visible and hopefully you can see that in the case of the iron there we can see some material gathering around the end of the nail and if we have a look at the zinc there you may be able to see that the uh, zinc has become darker looking now that is the sign of the presence of copper metal just having a sneak at iron sulfate and copper doesn't look as if there's any change there and having a look at iron and uh, zinc we might leave that one for some time and having a look at zinc sulfate and copper and iron again we might leave those two for uh, a little bit later. What we can do at this stage then is move on to the part three which is looking at silver. Now we've got some test tubes here and hopefully you can see what I've set up here. So in both of these test tubes I'm going to add some silver nitrate Already, I've already got a reaction there. What's happened there? That must have been impurities. I'll try again. And our 
second one here so there's our silver nitrate and again that looks a little bit darkened already uh, perhaps we've got some impurities in the water I did give that a good rinse so in the first uh, one we're going to put some copper metal and in the second one we're going to put in a piece of magnesium and I'll just show you those to the camera and you can see that that copper has turned a dark colour already and if we have a look at the magnesium there is a distinct reaction there we've got silver accumulating on the magnesium and of course here we've got silver accumulating on the copper we'll come back now to the other series of reactions uh, having left those for 10 minutes or so so having another look at our reactions after a half an hour or so uh, we can see first of all with the uh, first one of um, copper and copper ions and iron metal we've got quite a, an extensive reaction there uh, with the um, copper metal accumulating around the iron if we have a look at the copper and copper ions and the zinc uh, again what we've got there is a definite reaction and you can see the dark copper present there at the bottom of the test tube uh, with the iron and the copper uh, there's not been an obvious reaction there we've still got the pale yellow green color of iron 2 um, with zinc and iron 2 plus uh, again it doesn't look as if there's a great deal of reaction there there are some bubbles now those bubbles are not to be taken as a replacement reaction in other words the the, the zinc has not replaced the iron uh, with the copper and uh, the zinc sulfate no reaction there and with the iron and the zinc sulfate we've got no reaction there so we should be able now to fill in the discussion questions first one which of the metals gave two reactions well we've got the copper ions reacting with iron we've got the copper ions reacting with zinc the one that gave one reaction we might have expected a reaction here between iron 2 and zinc metal but it's not a replacement reaction and finally we got no reaction with the zinc ions now for part three the displacement of silver well we've got uh, quite a lot of the uh, silver there uh, displaced being displaced by the copper so we've got silver metal there sitting on the copper we can see some copper down at the bottom there and with regard to the magnesium we've got a lot of reaction there we've probably got excess magnesium so uh, we've still got some magnesium left but we wouldn't have too much silver uh, and this time you can see that the silver uh, metal is um, not quite as silvery as it is in the case of copper now when it comes to listing these uh, metals in order of their activity uh, certainly we've seen that um, sodium is the most reactive one um, next to that um, slightly or somewhat less reactive would be uh, magnesium we saw magnesium would react with the hydrochloric acid quite vigorously and produce hydrogen uh, after that we've got zinc and iron then copper then silver 
suggests why a solution to which copper was added changed colour. Well now, uh, the well, certainly in the case where um, iron was added to uh, the copper sulphate solution, we had a decrease in the blue colour um, and that of course would be a result of the reduction in the, the amount of Cu2+. Again, when we add the, the um, silver, uh, we added the copper to the silver nitrate, you can see, I hope, uh, a bluish colour to the uh, liquid that's there. And that, of course, would be the formation of Cu2+. I'll just put this up against the, a white background in the hope that it's a little bit more visible. When it comes to writing the equation for the reactions there, the silver nitrate plus magnesium, that would be, uh, would form silver metal and magnesium nitrate. In the second case where we've got silver nitrate and copper, uh, then we would have copper ions, that would be copper nitrate and silver metal. And with regard to C, would a replacement reaction occur between um, zinc and silver nitrate? Well, we would suspect yes, because zinc is more reactive than silver. When it comes to silver and aluminium nitrate, well, we would expect that there would not be a reaction in that instance. Why? Because aluminium, even though we didn't test it, uh, is in fact uh, more reactive than silver. So that's the story of our reactivity of metals. <laughs>